With us now is uh, Yaakov Lapin, uh, military correspondent for Jane's Defense Weekly. Good evening to you, Yaakov. Good evening. Uh, help me here. It's a little strange. Uh, Israel wants to maintain its military options independent, and yet uh, now it counts on U.S. refueling. What's happening? I think uh, there are a couple of factors um, that could help us make sense of this. Uh, first of all, um, it's clear that there is no American military deterrent against Iran at this at this time. Um, everybody knows that, the Iranians know that, the Americans know that, and the Israelis know that. Um, but there is an Israeli military deterrent. There is a posture that you just referred to. And so uh, this exercise uh, serves everybody's needs um, by placing the Israeli military strike option back on the table. Um, and the Americans seem to uh, want that option to be back on the table, not for activation at this time, but to remind the Iranians that it's there. Um, and another thing I think that's worth keeping in mind is that there is a very good relationship uh, between the defense establishments of Israel and the United States. Um, however, uh, the diplomatic relationship goes up and down between the governments. The defense establishments have maintained a very good level of cooperation throughout the years, and, and this is an expression of that as well. Yeah, well, the Pentagon uh, versus uh, State Department, it's a long, old story as we know it. Now, there's, right. a, there's a growing concern within Israeli military circles that the United States um, actually abandoned the whole Iranian issue altogether. And uh, is this true? Um, is this a, a true sentiment? I wouldn't say that uh, the United States abandoned the Iranian issue. What I would say is that, A, uh, the United States has prioritized great power competition with China and with Russia as its number one priority. This is uh, official American national security doctrine. It has been written and published openly. It's not a secret. And that means that the United States is shifting away very clearly. Uh, we saw that with Afghanistan. Uh, we're seeing it with Iraq. It's shifting away from lengthy conflicts in this region against asymmet asymmetrical enemies. And it is much more interested in having American America's allies, uh, the United States and Sunni countries, deal uh, with Iran with American assistance. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, America has left the region, but it does mean that it has stepped down its commitment. Um, and as a result of that, there is more impetus and more expectations in Washington for uh, this regional bloc that is forming for uh, Israel and the Sunni countries to step up when it comes to dealing with Iran. Right. Now, what are the actual ramifications of an Israeli strike in Iran if that happens? What will happen? It's very difficult to predict, but, you know, I think there are more likely scenarios and less likely scenarios. I mean, the first thing I think we should note is that this year, the year 2022, has been chosen by the Israeli Air Force to be the year that the Iran strike option comes back to the priority list. Uh, this is after years of, of prioritizing other things like the war between the wars in Syria and building up attack capabilities against Hezbollah in Lebanon, which remains the top conventional threat. Um, so this year is the year that, you know, the Israeli Air Force is really uh, putting this option back at the top of its priorities. We're seeing that with budgeting. We're seeing that with the most detailed planning that's now underway in terms of intelligence, uh, ammunition selections. Uh, aerial platforms, refueling, all of this is now center stage in the Israeli Air Force. Uh, now, if, if, if this uh, strike um, ever does come to pass, it seems that the most likely scenario will be that uh, Hezbollah will become very quickly involved in the response by the Iranian Shiite access. And a conflict, likely a full-scale conflict, but of course it's impossible to know, would likely follow an Israeli strike in Iran between Israel and Hezbollah. So you're looking at at least two fronts, Lebanon, Iran firing missiles from the east, uh, Hezbollah getting involved from Lebanon, Syrian militias, militias from Iraq. We and we don't know whether uh, the Gaza Strip and its terror factions would get involved. Right. So multi-arena conflict is the most likely scenario for, for that kind of strike, but not the only scenario.